Welcome to Demystifying Math. In this lesson, we're going to be finding formulas for sequences that involve polynomials. Let's find a formula for this sequence. We're going to start by looking for a common difference between the terms. So, if we subtract 5 and 1, we get 4. If we subtract 9 and 5, we also get 4. And adding 4 to 9 gives us 13. Another 4 will give us 17. So it looks like our common difference is 4. If you have a common difference between your terms, you usually have an arithmetic sequence. So we can use a first degree polynomial or a linear equation to represent the sequence. Remember that your input values are the natural numbers. So your input for the first term is 1 and your output is 1. For the second term, your input is 2, and your output is 5, and so on. So n would be the natural numbers. a1 is the first term, and d is the common difference. So all we need to do is plug in our first term, which is 1, and our common difference, which is 4. n and a n is our ordered pair, or our variables. And then we're just going to simplify to 4n minus 3. We can check and make sure this works. If we plug in a 5, that would give us the fifth term of the sequence. So 4 times 5 minus 3 gives us 17. So it appears to work for this sequence. Let's look at this sequence. We have n squared, n plus 1 squared, n plus 2 squared, and so on. So we're increasing n by 1 for each term of the sequence. So this is the formula. This formula would be n squared. But let's see how it happens when we look for a common difference. We're going to first simplify the first five terms. So we have n squared. n plus 1 all squared is the same as n squared plus 2n plus 1. n plus 2 all squared is n squared plus 4n plus 4. And then I went all the way to the um, n plus 4 squared, which is n squared plus 8n plus 16. Now we're going to subtract our terms. So we have n squared plus 2n plus 1 minus n squared gives us 2n plus 1. Subtracting the second and third term, we get 2n plus 3. Subtracting the next two terms, we get 2n plus 5. And the next term gives us 2n plus 7 when we subtract them. So we didn't get a common difference this time, but let's subtract one more time. 2n plus 3 minus 2n plus 1 gives us 2. Subtracting the next two terms, we get 2, and we get 2 again. So this is a common difference, but it was on the second time that we took the difference. So if you have a degree 2, you're going to have to subtract twice. The first row is going to subtract out the first terms, or the leading, co leading terms, which is n squared. And then the second time is going to subtract out the second term, so, in order to get to a common difference, you'd have to do it twice. So, this is a second degree polynomial of n squared. Let's do an example. We have this sequence, and we're going to find our common difference, or look for a common difference at least. So, we're going to subtract um, 5 minus 2, that gives us 3. 10 minus 5 is 5. 17 minus 10 is 7. And we'll just continue doing that. And notice we do not have a common difference. So we're going to subtract again. And we get a difference of 2 each time. So that's an indicator that it's degree 2, because we subtracted twice. So this polynomial is a polynomial of degree 2. So it fits the model a n squared plus b n plus c. Now we have to find out what a, b, and c are. So what we're going to do is create a system of equations. So remember that our input is the natural numbers. So for our first term, the input is 1 and the output is 2. For our second term, we have 2 as our input and 5 as our output. And then we have the ordered pair 3, 10. So we're going to use those three ordered pairs and create our system of equations. So for the first equation, I plugged in 1 for n, and I got a plus b plus c, and set it equal to 2. 
For the second equation, I let n be 2. So I have 4a plus 2b plus c equals 5. And then for the third one, n is 3. So I have 9a plus 3b plus c equals 10. Then I'm going to use a matrix to solve the system of equations. So I have my coefficient matrix, the inverse of that, times the constant matrix, which gives me 1, 0, 1. So that's indicating that A is 1, B is 0, and C is 2. I'm sorry, C is 1. So we have N squared plus 0N plus 1, or N squared plus 1. So if you plug in a 5, you get 5 squared plus 1, which is going to be 26, which matches with the sequence. So it appears to work for this sequence. Let's try a polynomial of degree 3. So again, we're going to simplify the first five terms. So n cubed, and then n plus 1 to the third is n cubed plus 3n squared plus 3n plus 1. And I expanded out n plus 2 cubed, n plus 3 cubed, and n plus 4 cubed. Then I'm going to subtract the consecutive terms. So subtracting the first two, I get 3n squared plus 3n plus 1. Then I get 3n squared plus 9n plus 7, and so on. And I subtract it a second time. So now my n squareds are canceling out. And if I subtract a third time, then the six n's will cancel out. And I'm just left with six. So because I had to have three rows, or three subtractions, to get to a common difference, that's an indicator that this is a third power polynomial. So it is actually n cubed. So let's try an example. So we're going to find our common difference first, and then do it again, and one more time. And now we got to 12 as our common difference. So now we know that it is a degree 3 polynomial. So that would be an to the third plus bn squared plus cn plus d. And again, we're going to use a matrix to solve a system of equations using the terms of the sequence to solve for A, B, C, and D. So our first term is 5, our second is 15, our third is 43, and our fourth is 101. You could use any four of them. I just chose the first four. So I set up a system of four equations and four unknowns. And I'm going to plug that into a matrix. So we want the inverse of the coefficient matrix times the constant matrix. And that gives us 2, negative 3, 5, and 1. So that means A is 2, B is negative 3, C is 5, and D is 1. So you could try plugging in any a natural number and see if it fits with the sequence. It does. And... Uh, that would be it for this one. Thank you for watching.